You ever get that feeling sometimes you just got too much stuff? You've accumulated a lot of things over years and months and it's taking up space in your house, in your rooms, and you're having to like, it's taking over your life. Well, I've had that feeling as well recently. So I made some decisions. And one of my decisions was to clear out some of my hi-fi gear. So what do you do when you've got too much stuff? You throw it away, you give it away, or you sell it, right? So I decided that I'm going to sell some of these things. So what do you do when you're trying to sell stuff? You list it on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, eBay, and you think it's easy? Do you think that stuff? You think when you first list it, it's going to sell real fast. Go, wow, this is an amazing pair of speakers, and it's a good price. These things should sell in no time. But then your, you know, days go by and weeks go by, and very little not even a bite and you're thinking oh what do i do do i delist it and try again later or lower the price and then you get offers low ball offers and you kind of laugh them off and go oh thanks but usually when i get an offer it means i got somebody on the hook and i you try to reel them in best you can i mean some people are just ridiculous and they're not gonna uh, they offer you a fraction of what you're asking and then you you say, well, I'll go down a bit, but then, you know, they're not interested. They're just trying to get something quick. And I've done that. It's a technique that you can do. Because, as, as I said, it's a buyer's market and for most things. But one of the main items, and was the subject of a video I did a few months ago, was my Empire turntable. And since I acquired the, the Technics turntable, which I know isn't as stylish or as cool looking, but I find it a lot easier to use and less clunky. So a little over a week ago, I listed my Empire turntable on eBay and it got quite a lot of attention, like 60, 70 watchers and it got, got a few bids and it sold. So now I'm getting rid of the Empire and I have to pack it up. Now turntables are, you know, this turntable is close to 50 years old. It's in really good condition. Um, it's delicate. It's fragile, like most turntables. And when you pack it to ship it, you have to do a really, really good job. So this is my video showing how to carefully and properly pack a turntable to ship, you know, via UPS or FedEx or that kind of thing. So here it is, my Empire Troubadour 598 mark two and there's the cover over there and i have to pack this up really safely and securely packing up turntables is hard enough and this is a particularly i think delicate and fragile model and i've done a bit of research and asked people for advice so i'm going to try to follow this advice to to the best i can so uh, i've got my 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 um shipping materials ready and I'm going to make this video to show you how I'm going to do it. But basically, I have to break it down as, as much as uh, you know possible. So, um, and wrap everything up very securely and pack it tight and safely so it doesn't get smashed. So, as I said earlier, you have to break a turntable down as much as possible. But not so much that the person who gets it on the other end can't put it back together. So... I removed the, the mat, the outer ring, and the belt, and put them aside for, for safekeeping. So this part is you remove the counterweight from the end of the tone arm because that's kind of heavy and you don't want that thing uh, causing problems. And I wish I picked a better angle for this, but you uns on this turntable you unscrew the head for the head shell. And uh, it has a little sled that attaches to the cartridge. And then I um, carefully lifted out the platter, which is quite heavy. And then you could see the uh, chassis underneath. And then I unplugged the uh, phono cable that uh, plugs in on the underside of the, uh, under the tone arm. Now here I use a zip tie to firmly uh, secure the tone arm to the rest. So it doesn't start bouncing around. Had a little trouble get, finding the hole there, but got it in and tightened the zip tie so it's uh, nice and uh, secure so that tone arm will not get loose and bounce around. I took the, 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 power, the power cord and put that together with a rubber band and then I took the phono cable and put it in the plastic bag 
And here is where I remove the stylus from the cartridge. And I'm going to wrap that in some little cotton pads that my wife uses to remove makeup. Used a couple of those. And I put them inside a little, um, a little case that a stylus uh, that I bought a few weeks ago came in. And I put that inside the little plastic box. I'm going to tape it up and write stylus on the box so the buyer can see what's inside, doesn't have to figure it out. Then I wrap up the cartridge in bubble wrap. And then I'm also going to wrap up the counterweight in bubble wrap. Keep those safe from bounce from um, you know causing problems. Now this part was a bit of a challenge because I wanted to keep the outer ring and the platter together. So I used some cardboard and I had to improvise and I used strips of cardboard and tape to uh, keep these all together in one piece. And uh, I've never done this before, but I did know that you don't want any of the tape to touch any of the uh, metal or wood or plastic uh, parts of the turntable. So I was very careful that the tape uh, would not be touching uh, the, the, the metal. So I tried different ways of uh, different pieces of cardboard and I, I wrapped it all up tightly with, um, with tape. And uh, I'm using this fast forward feature so it, it, so it seems like it's going faster. Uh, so it don't, you don't have to wait so long because it's rather tedious. But then I wrapped it in bubble wrap in all different directions from one direction and then another direction. And then I uh, did it again from around the side. I put the mat in a plastic bag and put it inside some cardboard and sealed that up. And then I wrapped the tone arm in bubble wrap to protect it from damage. So uh, that's good. That's nice and tight. So here we got the base ready. And I think it's time to cover it with bubble wrap. This could be a little bit of a challenge. Let's see. So for this, I got some pieces of cardboard and wrapped the, uh, the base up and then wrapped it, uh, wrapped it up with some uh, tape and uh, bubble wrap. And once again, I had to do this in three different directions. One, the, the one side, the other side, and then around the edge. And this, this was uh, quite, a, quite a process, getting this all done. But I really didn't want, this is wood base, it's, it's fragile. So I had to take a, extra care to use extra bubble wrap to make sure that was protected. I filled it with, uh, put a bit of peanuts on the bottom and then saw how it fit inside. So I put that in, I got the platter and I was able to find space for that, jam that in there tight. And uh, that was a tight fit there. That that platter is is kind of big, and it's got that uh, that uh, spindle sticking out. I threw in the, the pitting with the uh, with the mat in it, and all the parts, and I threw some peanuts on top, and then I had to distribute the peanuts and seal that box up nice and securely. So I know what you're thinking. I can't, I can't possibly just ship that in that little box so tight like that. Well, that's not the plan. The plan is to double box it and put it in this much larger box and fit in the, the lid as well on, t in t on top. I put some peanuts on the bottom of the big box, put the turntable base box inside, I wasn't happy with what I was going to do, so I decided to make a, a small box out of a bigger box to put the lid in. So this is my quick little construction. So I'm going to try to get the lid in here so it's uh, a bit more secure than just plain bubble wrap around it. Okay, so there it is, stuffed with bubble wrap and peanuts and cardboard. And I'm going to seal it up now and try to fit it into the other big box next. All right, I put it inside. I forgot to video it, so but the lid box is inside, and then I dumped uh, the rest of the peanuts on top. So. so after all that, I got it all to fit inside, and close the box and get it ready to ship. Thank goodness. Well, here it is, all packed up. It says packed like the pros on it. Hope I did. It took about three hours. And a lot of effort, not counting the time buying the supplies. 
at the store, like these boxes, the styrofoam, the peanuts, and the, and the bubble wrap. So now I'm gonna have to weigh it, measure it, and see if I can figure out how much this is gonna cost.